and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai value. We have built a deck around Muldratha, the Gravetide, for Throwback Thursday. What we do here with the Throwback Thursday streams from last Thursday until rotation, which is about six weeks away, is we build standard decks based around... Uh, rares and mythics that are going to be rotating out of the format that didn't really get their time to shine. Earlier, we had Bant Defenders uh, featuring Arcades, the Strategist, and then we had Admiral Beckett Brass and Grixis Pirates. And now we got Sultai Value with Muldratha, the Grave Tide. This deck is called Value because it's filled with creatures that generate value with their ETB effects. So basically, creatures with a whole bunch of ETB effects that get you card advantage. We got, you know, Risen Reefs, Tombbound Liches, you know, all these things. We got the removal, all the Cavaliers, everything. So that's why we're calling this deck Sultai Value. So, of course, Muldratha is a 6-6 that allows you, getting back to Muldratha, it's a 6-6 that allows you to play one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard during your turn. So we're going to want different permanents in our graveyard to take advantage of Muldratha. Whether it's an early removal spell like Deadweight, that you could replay because it's an enchantment or it's these creatures um tombbound lich seems like a, a pretty awesome card from m20 for this kind of deck how you get to uh you know whenever it etbs or if it's doing doing damage you get to draw then discard so you can put you know kind of fill your graveyard up with different things if you have two you know if you draw multiple moldrathas in your main deck or sorry in your opening hand or anything like that you can uh get rid of a moldratha if you have too many of them um and we have just like a whole bunch of one-offs to kind of uh, you know, help dig towards or replay for, for different reasons. Like Prime Speaker Vanifar seems like a, a pretty awesome card for this deck, but I don't want just a whole bunch of Vanifars. But, you know, turning a mana creature into a Lich or a Reef and turning that into a Chupacabra or a Hostage Taker and then turning that into a, a Cavalier or a Yurok, you know, and then turning that into Muldratha. You know, like we have a really nice chain here for Vanifar. So we got a couple of Neoforms and a Vanifar in here for that. Golgari Queen works really well with Muldratha because you can sacrifice a permanent and then you can replay it with Muldratha. You know, you can like sacrifice a land and then put your land back into play with Muldratha <clears throat> or anything like that. Plus, there's a lot of three mana planeswalkers like little Teferis and stuff like that um, running around. Tamio helps fill the graveyard, gives you card advantage. We're going to be using that minus ability quite a bit. Vivian. Uh, it helps us hit our land drops, helps us find Muldratha. Liliana is just an awesome card advantage engine also. So we got these Planeswalkers that should do a lot of work for us. And then finally, I was going to be just... I was just going to have four Tombbound Lich in this deck. But then I was like, you know what? It's Throwback Thursday. Let's get a Journey to Eternity in here. Let's do it. So there we go. We got a Journey to Eternity. This card is really cool. You you know, you know, it's a three-man enchantment. You need that creature to die. Because whenever that creature dies, um, you return that creature back to the battlefield under your control, which is awesome. And then plus you also get to transform the journey and you get the Cave of Eternity here at Zul. And uh, that legendary land is amazing. Um, so yeah, we, we want this our creature to die. We don't have a ton of ways to have our creatures die, but we have a few. We have Neoform, Prime Speaker Vanifar, Vraska Golgari Queen... Cavalier of Night, uh, Liliana Dreadhorde General. So we have a few, not a ton. We can put it on like a Risen Reef and then Deadweight our Risen Reef as well. But yeah, if we get to flip Journey, that is going to be awesome. <laughs> Steph, glad you're loving the throwback decks. Yeah, these we've had like these are three sweet ones that we play today. I really like to ban Defenders and I really like Grixis Pirates and I think this one is going to be awesome. <clears throat> sideboard wise we got like plague mare for like the vampire matchup another duress and a couple of legions end for that matchup as well plus a masker girl and an extra hostage taker we, you know we got another cut purse here for the the scape shift kind of matchup uh against control decks we'll bring in another six drop we'll bring in a command the dread horde get a bunch of things back uh, a couple of unmoored egos for the scape shift matchup as well this one looks like this will be pretty fun Let's see who our avatar can be here. Probably like Vanifar. Vanifar is a good avatar for this deck. All right, let's play a league. Let's see if we can get to, to five wins. See if we can get that five win dream to happen here with Sultai Value.
yeah, transform mechanics not going anywhere. That was just kind of like, like that's just been randomly placed on different things uh, throughout different sets. Um, you know, we had that. Uh, yeah, like basically, there's been just been like there's like morph cards that of course have the transform stuff, but recently with Magic Origins, we had the transform planeswalkers. Um, but you know, you saw it like not only with Ixalan did you have those transform lands, but then of course like Nicol Bolas and M19 just randomly had transform on it. You have cards like that, like Arch Archangel Archangel Avison, uh randomly had transform. Like you're just gonna have transform just kind of randomly in different in different sets. So it's kind of like it's it's much rarer, but it's kind of like double strike that's just kind of randomly in different sets. So it's yeah, it's basically evergreen, but it's not it's not for for very many cards. Yeah, M19 Bolas is definitely one of my favorite cards in Standard 2. I don't know if it's my absolute favorite. Like yours there, Lord. I'd have to really think about it, but it's it's up there. It's on the short list. So it looks like we're playing against Grixis. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the... Actually, probably rid of the Golgari Queen. Because like, if the Golgari Queen's minus isn't really doing much for us... I mean, I guess I could just get rid of the, the Land War Elf. Now that we know we have another land here. Yeah, we'll just get rid of the land war elf. That's fine. Does this connect? We connect in the dots? There's no way this connects, right? Wow, we connected. We get to loot again. We get to loot again. Every story is an opportunity for new data. Basically, Tamio's. Like, there's just a really good chance that Tamiyo misses with whatever tick up. So I just want to get my card back. Hmm. I need one more mana to really do what I, you know, like to Neoform for a Hostage Taker and then recast Phoenix or go get a Chupacabra, anything like that. Okay, well. You should leave. I think I've suffered worse. Okay. I only have two four ofs. And we already have one of those in our hand. Um, Risen Reef, Risen Reef's still not a bad name, still being three Risen Reefs. Let me aid your research. That's not a bad name still. Cavalier of Thorns is a two of. Maybe a Cavalier of Thorns. There's certainly a, a problem with our, our, our Tamiyo tick up is really hard to actually get cards but it's it's all about that tam tamio minus yeah so we got your rock in the graveyard all right so we'll go risen reef Neoform away. Risen, Risen Reef. Chupacabra this. Everyone is expendable. Seek 
and find. Um, I mean, I need another land. So three, three Risen Reef, two Cavalier of Thorns. I say the Cavalier. Hooray! Still no black mana in here. I want to minus Tamiyo for a land, but only black mana. But yeah, these are all blue green lands in here. There we go. Hey, what's up, JT? Thanks for giving you good gruel ideas. Well, you are welcome. Thanks for that continued support. All right, well, we're going to attack with the troops. All right, attack of the troops. I'm not, like, I definitely consider maybe getting back the... Getting back the Yurok. So many good cards in here. I want this thing. The past Give me that. Is never forgotten. Being ruthless has its rewards. Mm -hmm. Don't know exactly how our opponent's going to deal with all of our stuff. Like, we, I just have so much stuff that I can do. Nobody taught them how. Yeah, just have this one Cavalier of Night. All right, so we're in a Cavalier of Night. Sack the troop. Kill that thing. No, I was gonna have such a cool turn. All right, so what my plan was, so I was going to kill that. I was going to have the, the Vraska Golgari Queen kill the other thing. Um, and then I was going to Neoform away the Cavalier to put Muldrotha into play. And then with Cavalier of Night dying, we would have got Risen Reef, so we'd get the Risen Reef trigger. And then with Muldrotha, we were going to be able to play a land from our graveyard and play the Land War Elf in our graveyard. So we're going to be able to play a land and a Land War Elf. I guess even even instead of the, instead of playing the Land War Elf, I could have just played the Deadweight that was in the graveyard to kill the O1, and then I could have ticked up on on the Vraska again. Okay, anyway, uh, Duress is probably just fine. Veil of Summer, probably pretty cool. Command the Dread Horde, yes please. Playcrafter is going to be good against everything except for Phoenix. Probably still worth it. All right, so 65, what are we taking out? So like Tamiyo, eh, you don't take out Tamiyo. No, we don't take out Tamiyo. All right, um, we can probably trim one mana creature. Don't need to be super fast. We could probably trim the Cavalier of Night. I don't know, man. I guess the Spark Double. 
<laughs> All these cards are cool. Maybe Golgari Queen. No, Gol Golgari Queen did a good job minusing and killing Phoenix token stuff. Um, I don't know. It's it's about to it's about to leave. I ran out of time. I just took out two duresses and a land of werewolf. I guess. I ran out of time. I panicked. It's about to. Yeah, I mean, all all these cards are just so cool and they're just so much fun. I don't want to take them out. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll let our opponent know that we have thought that we have Vela Summer. Good job, Samantha. Yeah, my opponent can play around the Vela Summer now, but it's. I think it's worth it still to not get Thought Ragered on turn two. What? War boss. I was not expecting a war boss. All right, well, that's going to make my life a lot harder. Double war boss on the play. That's lucky. I should consider your rock for the in this deck. Oh, in the soul in the soul tie lands deck. Oh, in that deck. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Hmm. Well, play crafter definitely out. Maybe I want Plague Mare. Put these things back in here. I shouldn't be taking those out. Journey. I mean, if they're going to be that aggressive, the Command of the Dread Horde is not going to be very good. Let's take out Hostage Taker. That's, that's one that's difficult to do a lot with. Yeah, Plague, Plague Mare or Masker Girl could, could clean up all those things. I'm not that worried about War Boss, though. Should I be? Like, that's not gonna... That, that kind of game's not gonna happen again. I can take out Liliana Dreadhorde General. We'll play a Plague Mare there. War Boss is three CMC. You can't you can't Legion's end War Boss. Oh, see. Okay, all right, Matthew. So yeah, you took the cat to the, the little kitty to the vet. Um, you didn't take her to the shelter. If you're thinking about taking care of the kitty cat yourself, that would be, like, cats are amazing. Gotcha. They have one. Oh, uh, they have one cat and three dogs. They should have a second cat. Cats really like most cats. Not, I guess, not every cat, but most cats really like. They're, uh, they like uh, having another cat with them. I know we have this other land war elf here. Ugh, I 
I guess I got punished for not playing that land war elf. Basically, I was kind of thinking like there could be a sweeper here. Now we don't have six mana for Moldratha though. Moldratha's an elemental. Yeah, that's cool. All right, hopefully we draw a land and we get to play Moldratha and get double Risen Reef triggers. What? On more to ego. What have we played that they possibly want to ego? Cavalier Thorns? Okay. All right, you got my two Cavalier Thorns. I was basically thinking that that the elf would be maybe just overextending that I didn't need to, but I guess I should have played it. Oh yeah, Journey to Eternity. Give me that Journey to Eternity. Absolutely. All right, we'll see if there's removal for Moldratha. If not, we get to play Vivian from the graveyard. Moldratha already hit another land drop and drew us another card. Hmm. No one knows the wilds like I do. Basically, I just I just want to get the Vivian out of my graveyard while we can. <laughs> Stop winning so quickly. Want to keep playing the deck? Man, we get to Cavalier or Knight sack this Risen Reef. Risen Reef comes back into play. Get Journey also. Dude, I don't even know what's gonna happen here. Feel the wrath, not bad. For a mouse. Is this gonna be crazy? I don't even know. We're gonna get like Two triggers. That doesn't really matter. Sack Risen Reef. Kill that thing. It comes back. Two more triggers. And our Atzel is in play now. All right, so that's pretty good. And that adds mana of any color. So with playing this other black source, we can Chupacabra away the Phoenix if they block. Oh man, this deck is sweet. We can start Man, we could start sacrificing our stuff to Vraska Golgari Queen also. And then returning it with Atzel. Oh, man. man. We really did it with Moldratha here. We really did it. <laughs> this has to be illegal. Just too much value. Oh, uh, they have to attack into our 4 or 5 lifelinker. So I gain that life, go back up to 20. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's start by casting the Vraska. And then we're going to sacrifice the Risen Reef so we can draw a card. And now we will play the Risen Reef from our graveyard. Get some triggers. Um... Alright, that was fun. Now we'll kill our opponent. Wow. That Moldratha value. So good. So good. What's up, original Q? Yeah, Moldratha is... That's a great card. Yeah, it's like, oh, darn. They thought Erasure to card. I guess I'll just have to play it from the graveyard now. Yeah, we definitely want to play against the slower decks. We can outgrind slower decks. Yori, welcome back. Thanks for that resub there, Yori. Down for half a year. Thank you, thank you. No, Basic Mountain is not a good slower deck land Whenever I see basic mountain I don't think slower deck Hey Slatester Welcome GG's Glad you're enjoying the YouTube channel and everything Now you can watch our match later when it's up on YouTube. You're playing the Grixis, yeah. That was... Man, my, this deck... We, that was the very first match we played with this deck. And... I will have to say I was quite happy how our deck performed there. Um... Yeah, let's go kill this thing, play the Paradise Druid. Of course, I was just planning on playing the Tomb Bound Lich, but withdrawing the Paradise Druid, let's get another Mana Source out here. Stop. I don't have any Reclamation Sages... Unfortunately. Let's get the Vanifar in play. See if we get to Cavalier of Night next turn. Whoa. No sword can pierce my scales. That's fine. Behold. Land? Darn. Alright, so I could either sack. Tombbound Lich or Risen Reef. Um, I guess Decline. I guess we put that in our hand. So we can play it. Soul Sack. Risen Reef. Chupacabra that. There is no peace in defeat. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we'll go get the Cavalier Knight now. Um, let's see. How are we going to do that, though? I mean, well, that's going to go get Cavalier Knight. All right, put that into play. Oh, I should get your rock. I forgot about your rock. Your rock's life link too. Uh, no, I'm not sacrificing a creature. Yeah, I guess I could have gotten your rock. Hmm. We're still going to do that. We're going to do that with the Neoform. Now we got 8 power lifelink here. Should have got the Yurok first, but oh well. So I could play like Moldratha. Crazy Pyro! Welcome back. Thanks for keeping that sub streak going. And that gets us to a sub goal. Alright, so yeah, lots of lots of ways we can win this. My opponent's probably mad at me that I'm not winning it quicker. I'm going to start by playing this Risen Reef. Get four triggers. Ooh, Journey. Yeah, so I have to I have to kill the Firebrand before damage. So they don't just block, block and sack to kill Risen Reef. Like they'll they'll still kill the Risen Reef, but what? Just even kill Risen Reef. I. All right, back up to seventeen. All right, so with that sub goal hit, we are already five sub goals t towards our next 12 hour stream because of all the sub goals hit yesterday. And our our next, that's, that's talking about the next 12 hour stream after Saturday. We're doing a 12 hour stream Saturday and we're working towards our next one also. What current top tier-ish decks use the least amount of cards from the new set? Um, the the Grixis or sorry not Grixis but the the Demir Demir control that we played on Tuesday that or on Monday sorry that I played on Rotation Proof Monday that deck was very real uh, that's that's very good there besides that uh, like Teamer Elementals basically just the lands um, or like Simic Simic Elemental Ramp kind of thing basically like a, a Risen Reef deck. Um, oh, I guess I need a sideboard. All right, so uh, Deadweight, Legion's Ends, Plague Mare, Masker Girl. Uh, sure, maybe Hostage Taker, maybe not. Let's get rid of Liliana, Tamio, Journey, unfortunately. Um, one Moldratha. Spark double. And one Neoform. Sounds good. Correct. Correct. This is not the Soulty mid range that I was going to be playing in, in ranked yesterday. No. And so I'll be playing that deck tomorrow. Uh, 
the deck that I'm really considering for the MCQ. You go duress over hostage. Okay. I could see that. I could see that. Hostage isn't so bad. Because, you know, it's five mana. You take a one drop. You play the one drop again. Yeah, I could see cutting them, though. We got the troops. I mean, I like these first four cards, but these other three are just kind of dead. I think we'll mulligan that. We can probably do better. So we could have turn two Plague Mare. Yeah, so Crazy Pyro. Yeah, check out the decks that I played on Monday. You know, check the YouTube channel there. Because um, I did, like, Rotation Proof Mondays. And so, you can, like, there's, like, the playlist. See if anything there sparks your interest. And, of course, the the decks can be upgraded, especially, like, mana base-wise and stuff also. Um, but, yeah, check, check those out. That, that's a good place to start. Besides that, of course, just going to um, MTG Goldfish, and you can kind of see if there's any anything that you have a lot of the cards for already, of just like the popular decks, if you want to make something like that. So 2-2, two, two, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a counter on it. Plague Mare. What a good horse. Huh. I was hoping they were going to play the Spell Gorger weird, so I was just going to be able to play the Choops on it. Yeah, Esper, yeah, Esper Hero. You don't need much for the new set with Esper Hero. Uh, we did, we did a rotation proof Esper Hero, and that deck felt pretty good. We got horses and puppies and elves, elves, horses, and puppies. Elves and horses. That's like Lord of the Rings. I'm not sure where the puppy dog fits in Lord of the Rings. Hey, Shadows. Going good? Oh, yeah, the wargs. Yeah, it is like a warg. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we have, like, Legolas riding on the horse, and then we got the wargs. See, look at Hasa Shaker be not bad. Whoa, Scorch Bitters and Elemental? Wow. What great sequencing by me. I definitely knew that, and I definitely prioritized playing the Risenry first because of said elemental well, that's kind of a bummer that was a really good draw step i was planning on chump blocking with those other crappy one ones um nah, might as well just chump block you just chump block again next turn plague mare is a nazgul horse that's true. There you go. Yeah, that is true. That is that is true. Plague Mare is definitely a Nazgul horse. Mm -hmm. 
So Vraska. I my old skills still have oh, the day is yours. We can start sacrificing these extra lands too, draw more cards. That lets us play the Risen Reef before this Cavalier of Thorns. Yeah, and gains a little bit of life. Ooh. Okay, okay. All right, I'm picking up what we're putting down here. Do you smell what Yurok is cooking? Do I go other Risenry first? Probably. Cavalier. Good night. Sacrifices must be. Ah, uh, I don't have a black mana up. Stupid auto tapping. Could have ki killed that weird card over there. <laughs> Land for our queen. Ow. Okay. So. Kill that, kill that, kill that. All right, we're gonna be killing a lot of stuff here. You kill this. I <sighs> Pity we couldn't have been allies. Kill that. Put that into play. Uh, we do not need to sacrifice another creature. Muldratha! Gotta get Muldratha in play. So much value. That spell gorger we weird looked like some dead weight over there. <clears throat> All right, so which one of these do we want to play? Want to play our Nazgul horse? We could replay the dead weight. Let's get our Nazgul horse out. It did really good earlier. Oh yeah, double double triggers with your rock. I didn't even think about the double trigger with your rock there. That's pretty sweet. All right, this deck is pretty awesome, man. We played some fun decks today. All three of our decks so far have been just awesome. The band defenders isn't wasn't as good as the other two, but the Grixis Pirates deck was really fun, and this deck's really fun. Yeah, Muldrotho rotates. That's that's why I built this deck. Muldrotho's from Dominaria. Part of our throwback Thursday. Yeah. You do have to be careful. Yeah, double yeah, double trigger Masker Girl just immediately destroys everything on the battlefield. Like there's there's nothing that survives, <laughs> basically. Yeah. 
Just nothing survives. Okay. Turn two, Risen Reef. Turn three, Chupacabra. Hey, that's awesome, Dr. Grindel. Good, glad to hear. Good, good, good. All right, what are, let's start looking with Tamiya. What are we getting against Sacred Foundry Plains? Like this has got to be Feather. So what do we want against Let Feather? storied battle worth retelling. To the library. Liliana Dreadhorde General. That's what you want against Feather. There's only one in the deck, but that is the card. That is the card. Do we go for that? It's just a one of? Why not? Ugh. Ugh, I should have said Moldratha. No. Now, even better than Ugin, because Liliana just, you know, sacrificed two creatures. You can't save them with God's willing or anything. Let's get this Moldratha. That card's pretty good. That one's pretty good. I follow the tracks of the wise. We'll just play this thing. Trigger. So now Tamio can kind of like fill our graveyard, and then we can cast up with Moldratha. Good combo here. find my notes helpful um really doesn't matter what I name too much okay so we want to go risen reef and chupacabra Let's put this land into play from our graveyard. So doing the attack first so that when the God's willing, the feather So when they God's Willing Feather, um, they don't get to block the Muldratha also. I just want more lands. Just want more lands. I guess maybe we just don't actually even Chupacabra it. Maybe we just don't even Chupacabra. Yeah, there's not really a point in trying to kill it. Just to like show the God's willing, basically. I guess that's that's the point in trying to kill it, is that they, they have to cast God's willing and they don't get to cast removal. Where's lands? Adurio! Welcome back for the second month. Yeah, it does say cast as land, which is weird. And there are no, no extra free lands here. Yep, we can always grab Tamio back with Muldratha. 
But like that's that's why we want the Risen Reefs just to get us a whole bunch of lands. Because we have like infinite things to cast. We don't have infinite mana though. They're tapping out. Well then. I guess I don't get to play the creature any more creatures from my graveyard. Yeah, I'll still just go Liliana. You know, we could could shoop. Plague are great against Adanto Vanguard, and if they have. They have War Boss. Pretty good there. Playcrafter, awesome against Feather. These cards are pretty good. I don't know, Duress Bells from their hand, I suppose. Hostage Shaker, a little slow. We'll take out one Moldrotha, but I don't know, Moldrotha was awesome there. Uh. Journey to Eternity, Spark Double. Man, I gotta cut so many cards. I don't wanna cut all these cards. I guess maybe cut a couple of Liches. It's not really a Lich matchup. Vivian does kill Feather, but really slowly, you know, really expensive. I'm not cutting Land or Elf. Yes, it dies to shock, but you don't you don't cut it you don't cut it because of that. Basically never cut Land or Elf. I think I can cut it. I think I can cut one of the two mana creatures though, with having all these extra early on spells. No, that's probably not smart. We'll get rid of a Neoform. Actually, no, keep Neoform, get rid of Vanifar. Vanifar is really weak to Reckless Rage. We'll have Neoform be our Vanifar. Uh, yeah, you can... Um, just have another creature removal spell instead of the hostage taker on the board. You know, you can have another chupacabra, for example. If you don't have another if you don't have another hostage taker. I basically have it in there as like another answer to to Adanto Vanguard, but we got a lot of answers to Adanto Vanguard already in the deck, so Yeah, just like another Chupacabra. Yeah, I think yeah, I don't think you should ever cut elves. Like, ever in any green deck. Never take that card out. The value in the, the deck name means that we're just playing tons and tons of creatures that, um, that generate value that have card advantage built into them. Well, they probably don't have a God's Willing if they just let that happen. I 
I lead the Golgari now. Step aside or be crushed. Ah. Bad thing to make it indestructible. Oh man. I love seeing all these Adanto Vanguards over here. Love it. We just gotta get a little bit more mana, and then Moldratha just gets to deadweight all of these vanguards. Yeah, so we'll play Thorns next turn to get us some more mana. Yeah, because Mold Moldratha can play permanents from the graveyard, so this an enchantment's a permanent, so you can play. You can replay those. Well, that's also a thing. Hmm. So I can I can go grab Plague Mare with Paradise Druid. I can go grab Masker Girl with Chupacabra. I'll go get Plague Mare and then play the other Paradise Druid. Everyone is oh, well, I should attack with this first, but whatever. Yay, more land. This horse has been so good for us. Wow. Kill my horse. All right. Victory for Sultai value. This deck has been awesome. This deck has been quite awesome. Loving it. Ugh. I'm thinking we're making it to the final boss. Yeah, y'all think I should play Muldratha in the MCQ? On the draw, or, yeah, on the draw, I'd be mulliganing this too slow, but on the play, maybe, maybe it gets there. Yeah, our escape shift matchup's probably not great. We got a cut purse in the board. We got a couple more egos. Um, so yeah, we have like two more egos. Hey, suddenly our hand looks a lot better. Um, you can find the, the Sultai list. We're playing it tomorrow. You can find it on the stream decker from yesterday for the deck that says Sultai midrange. Yeah, yeah, I built this deck earlier today, Intruder. I built all three of the decks that we're playing, besides the donation deck, the other three I built them earlier today. You know, I just wanted to build a Moldratha deck, and so put this together. But yeah, this is works out really well. Yeah, I've played a couple different Yurok decks. Or, like, we played we played the Yurok field deck yesterday. Um, wasn't too impressed by it, but talked about some things to change. And the person that donated for it said they have made those changes and they've been, they've been winning a lot more with it now. But um, I'm still not sold on Yurok in that deck, honestly. 
Like, I, I played one on Monday without Yurok, a rotation proof Sultai list, so, like, you know, admittedly, it wasn't, didn't have everything in that list, but. Give me this Terramander. It's hard to it's hard to play a list that's like really good against scapeshift pre board. I think it's the kind of deck that you just try to have a lot of sideboard slots for. All right, get an extra dead weight, some duresses, some legions ends, plague mare, massacre girl, veil of summer. All right, same kind of thing. We're gonna cut a Moldratha, maybe two Moldratha. Probably need to trim down on these fives and sixes. Tamio out, Spark Double out, Journey out. They don't kill my stuff. Yeah, Tombbound doesn't get to block, so Tombbound's not very useful. Maybe you just take out a lot of Tombbounds. It doesn't really get to block. All right, now I'm cutting one more top end card. I'm cutting one more five or six drop. Could be Liliana. Could be Yurok. It's probably supposed to be Yurok in this matchup. Yeah, we don't need Yurok this matchup. All right. We're playing against Mono Blues, like where they counter everything. So I got Veil of Summers for the counter spells. All right, looks like the card's in our deck. Mm, looks like opponent's down to like five cards. That's too bad. Trickster. That tricky, tricky trickster. What if Prime Speaker Vanifar was an elemental ooze wizard? Instead of an elf ooze wizard. That'd be pretty sweet.
All right, so we got to dive down out of there. All right, now, hoping this gets countered. Cool. Now we steal it. Give me that trickster. We finally got it. So I got three cards. And we're looking pretty good here. Should be able to finish this out. I wouldn't mind them using dive down here. Awesome. So we can sack our land war elf. It's a good game, so I'm saying good game back. But game's not quite over. Blocking? That's a rough spot to be. All right, GG's. Sultai value, getting that 4-0. We are on to the final boss. Here we go. Sorry, Rob Schneider's daughter, who was just singing there. El King, that is. We gotta get to the final boss playlist. 4-0. Hmm. Yep, this is a keep. In Journey to Eternity, a Risen Reef. I'm all here for that. Hello. Hit land drops. Come on, deck. This is another mono blue. Simic Flash. Drake's Phoenix. Nexus. A lot of opt shins for decks to play opt. No lands, no. No. All right, Simic Flash's friend Mono Blue. Looks like Mono Blue with Cutthroat. Yep, Mono Blue Cutthroat. And okay, we're getting there. Choop, choop a loop, choop a loop. Those wargs. Did 
No counter, no counter. All right, no counter. <laughs> oh, all the lands. Pick a land, any land. I'll take this one. Get, we could double spell with these liches. They got death touch, which is cool. Or actually, we'll go lich. Journey the choop. Yeah, journey the choop. Rude. Then I'm thinking like sack choop to neoform, go get your rock, choop comes back, you get a lot of triggers. So if I play Moldrotha, I can play a land, but that's just one land. I think I do want to just neoform choop. Sweet. Go get your rock. Double elemental trigger. Didn't help us. Risen Reef. <clears throat> Not getting it there for us, but there we go. Man, this deck is so cool. So we'll get dead weight. So mono blue with cutthroat. So dead weight, legion's end, plague mare, masker girl, duresses, veil of summers, all that kind of stuff again. Yeah. So like that, the troop was gonna eat both of their little one one flyers there. All right, this looks pretty good. Looks acceptable. Kind of want that other hostage taker in here. I want to cut a mana creature for another hostage taker. They don't play removal for hostage taker. Yeah, the <clears throat> the O3 doesn't block anything anyway. I think we have to mulligan the double Moldratha opener, especially with the Vivian Reed. We have three cards, too expensive there. All right, definite keep here. Um, so I guess Neoform might have been just a card I should have bored out because like Neoform getting countered is really bad because you have to sacrifice a creature and then it gets countered. You don't go get to go grab anything, but it's so powerful if it resolves, though. 
It's either Paradise Druid or Neoform, because I'm going turn one elf, turn two, Reef. At that point, Paradise Druid isn't really helping us that much anyway, right? So let's Let's see if we can sneak a Neoform in here. Uh, I'm not sure how much Hawkeye weighs. I think... I think somewhere in like the 10 to 12 pound range, somewhere in there. Yeah, they had the pirate counter. I knew I should have just dead waited. You could tell I was considering that. Or just waited a turn and just wait a turn and then dead weight plus Risen Reef. That was that was a bad casting of Risen Reef there on my part. A bad casting a risen reef. Oh, that actually worked. Don't really want to Neoform into a Paradise Druid. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, so we're just going to sit here and wait. And I didn't attack with Land War Elves because they're Flash creatures, such as Trickster. Gross. More gross. Well, that can at least give me something kind of cool. Basically just a Risen Reef. But eight a counter spell. That's a lot of potential there. We draw a creature here. Creature. Darn it. Basically any creature, you know, we could do some good stuff with. 
with Vanifar. Ugh. Why couldn't I have you last turn? Alright, so I, I messed this game up. I messed this game up. By my, my turn two play. By just playing the Risen Reef into the, the counter spell on turn two. That was definitely my fault. So lesson learned. I guess two bound lich actually does get to block though. You know, we're thinking two bound lich doesn't block in this matchup. I guess it actually does block. Just blocks that one card, but it blocks that card really well. Let's take out the Neoforms for them. Cavalier into return a removal could have one. How does... Gosh, this is slow. Okay. Keeping the kitty as an outdoor kitty. That's that's still that's good to hear. I like it. Spell pierce dispersal. Double curious obsession. This hand is messed up. This is a messed up hand right here. Wow, what a hand. So they're just going to end step Sailor. They can drop a Curious Obsession and have a Spell Pierce. So I'm going a weird way about this. I'm taking the spell pierce. Because then taking the spell pierce doesn't... Like, they want to keep up Lookout's Dispersal. That doesn't let them play the Curious Obsessions. If I take the Dispersal, you just very obviously play the you just play a curious obsession on there and hold up spell pierce and I don't really want them to just have the curious obsession on there drawing a couple of cards there No one said I always survive. You'll see. Ha! I've seen worse. Uh, Surge Mare's a problem. Surge Mare's a problem. Vanifar doesn't have, like, haste, you know, like, we can't just play the Vanifar and then activate it immediately. But the Moldratha means we get, like, Vivian back. Um. Because, like, now if they, they counter stuff, we still get to replay it. I wish I could play that Duress.
So I guess if I play Masker Girl, the Muldrotha dies. Hmm. And then I'm left with just Vanifar and Choop in hand. Yeah, she kills Muldratha. Oh! Gosh, I need to watch auto tap better. Gosh, I need to watch auto tap better. My my plan was to play that and play Risen Reef here, but I don't have blue mana anymore. So that was my plan was play that and play play Risen Reef. So Muldratha, of course, is perfect here with Chupacabra, because our Chupacabra just gets to block this Surge Mare. It dies, we get to replay it. I wish I would have played that Risen Reef. Droth is awesome. That card's kind of a problem. Got some more Muldratha fuel. Including we can play this land from the graveyard now. And we can just keep on, you know, trying to play like these this Vivian Reed every turn from the graveyard. Can't grind through it. I just can't. You can't grind through this. We just block and we just replay our stuff. Can't do it. G G. That's the five O. That's the five O. Just get Moldrotha in play. Doesn't matter how many counters you have. I can just re re keep replaying stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I think people just never really found a good Muldratha deck. I guess that, I think that's why it's never really seen too much play. People haven't really figured it out. But I think with M M20 here, it's given Muldratha a ton. You know, like Tombbound Lich was awesome. Risen Reef, obviously, is just absolutely amazing. So, like, M20 has really given this deck a lot. And then obviously all of these things are just amazing. And so I, d I don't know if people have really tried too much Muldrotha again after M20. But you see, like, M20 is kind of the core of the deck with our threes and our fives. Um, but yeah, this 75 felt great. 
felt really, really good. Man, sometimes it sometimes I just make good decks. Sometimes it happens. Love this deck. We're gonna have to play this again here real soon. You know, probably during our twelve hour stream on Saturday, or I don't I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. They try taking it over to ranked to see how it does. But we beat up some good decks there. Um yeah, felt pretty good. Dead weights were awesome. Just one mana removal. Really, really quality. Uh, Plague Mare, awesome. So many good cards. Chew, Hostage Shaker were all awesome. We even got to we got to do Journey up to Eternity once, and obviously that that game was way over. Um, realistically, Journey to Eternity probably shouldn't be in here, but you know you never know. You never know. Um, but yeah, pretty awesome deck here. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed this deck as much as I did. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Also, don't forget to let me know what what other cards, uh, like rares and mythics, are going to be rotating out of standard that you want to see decks built around, like Muldratha. Like I made the Muldratha deck for today. Uh, what other ones? Whoops, I ac accidentally got rid of a Muldratha there. What other? Whatever. What other ones do you want me to build around for future Throwback Thursdays? Let me know. Uh, definitely check out the other Throwback Thursday videos also. Grixis Pirate, Band Defenders. Check those out. Those were a lot of fun. But that's it here for Sultai Value. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.